Morning everyone, can you confirm you're hearing me? Thumbs up if you're hearing me. Thank you. All right, uh, just a couple more minutes and then we begin. Thank you for joining. Hope you all had a good night. Restful one and peaceful one. Morning again, everybody. Thank you for joining. Just giving others a few more minutes uh, before we kick off. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join me for another declaration and another uh, pronouncement on behalf of the people of cockpit country. Okay, let's get started. Ashe, Kwaba, Salam Alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Healing from the hills of Cockpit Country in the Cockpit Country town of Akompong. Unity is what essentially binds a movement and creates the solidarity behind any movement of a people be it for a just cause in defined in its purest and simplest way. I come to you this morning to essentially address a significant happening uh, within the last week. On Sunday, the Maroon Chiefs had a meeting to discuss the current state of affairs and the relations with the government and a lot of what you've been seeing thrown around in the media. We've sat back and we've observed what has become a solid attack on our legacy, on our heritage. And it all began with kinda, the word that means one family. It transitioned to out of many, we are one people. In that meeting as chiefs, the four elected Maroon colonels were on that call, Colonel Wallace Sterling, Colonel Douglas, Colonel Lloyd Latibadere, and myself, along with others of the indigenous community. Now, today, I say that we had a pretty thorough and engaging conversation in arriving at a direction and a path to quell all the nonsense that has been spun around and thrown around through the media. We're not here to divide anyone. We're not here to create problems. The Maroons have lived for over 300 years in these hills unprovoked. We have not been at war since signing off that treaty. We've main, we maintain brotherhood, we lived off the land, we continue to live off this land and protect the land. In recent times, we found ourselves in a conundrum where so many things have been promised to us as a people, roads, water, running water, you know. The cockpits provide 40% of the island's fresh water, we don't have running water. We've had promises upon promises upon promises that these things would come. And to date, we still struggle as a people. In that meeting, 
on Sunday between all the colonels and other members of the indigenous community. Gamma G, Marcus Goff, who is a legal um, representative. And I find that it was a productive meeting, as I mentioned. Coming out of that meeting, we tabled the position that collectively we would prepare the maroon working papers which we would be passing to the government to begin dialogue to have a diplomatic resolution to this cause it was made clear in that meeting that a contact from the government had reached out to colonel sterling in an effort to arrange a meeting with the maroon chiefs only that the terms of this meeting would be that Chief Curry not be included. We raised the concerns, we had an open discussion about it, and everyone decided it was in the best interest of the collective and maintaining the position of one, one conversation having to do with the rights for indigenous peoples and the Maroons. What I'm saying is that having agreed to these terms within the last 24 hours, much to my disappointment, the decision of the other three colonels have changed. Colonel Latibadir was very strong in his opposition of having a conversation that would exclude any of the Maroon colonels. Why? because we're seeking to unify our voices behind a cause and we're trying to unify our own communities and bodies towards the common cause. We all want this to be a peaceful and diplomatic resolution. I will not continue and join the nonsense that's being spurred in the media. We're not trying to create a divide. We're not creating a threat to the state. We're not here trying to overthrow anybody. The Prime Minister has his job and I have mine. The end of it all is that what we've been asking for is a sit down to have discussions around the rights of the people, the indigenous people of the land, the Afros and the Indians, everybody who is here, who is a representation of their heritage. We still aren't able to have a reasonable diplomatic conversation. Now, what would have caused my fellow colonels to change their position is still not clear to me. We had an emergency call last night at around 7 p.m. to discuss this matter. I again aired the position that a collective argument and a collective approach is the best approach. Because at the end of the day, we all represent the indigenous first peoples of this land. And for what has transpired in the media and between the Maroons and the government for years, there's an element of trust that needs to be babied, that needs to be, that needs to be preserved. So I come today to let everybody know that my position remains firm in asserting the birthrights of the cockpit country Maroons coming via our indigenous rights and our treaty of 1738. Now, at the end of it all, we should continue to, main, to remain resolved in keeping the rhetoric positive because Chief Richard Curry did not come here to start a war. Chief Curry came here to assert birthright and to facilitate economic and social upliftment of the Maroon people. Nani of the Maroons wasn't the only Maroon hero. Should I say heroine? Many had fought and died in that 83 years. Captain Kojo stood up, fought. We signed that treaty to bring peace to the land and bring freedom to the people. Clause 6 of the treaty reads that the Maroons would capture, kill, or suppress any rebels found after the day of this treaty unless they subject themselves 
to the terms and accommodation of Captain Kojo and his successors. That was very clear, a diplomatic engagement between two nations that swore to peace and maintaining peace on the island. Everyone had an opportunity to join. I did not sign a treaty. I'm merely here to affirm the rights of a people and preserve our lands that are a significant threat of being mined. At the end of the day, the chief looks after his people. We live in a landlocked territory. Therefore, diplomatic engagement is necessary. Why would I then want to start a war? I have said it on many platforms. I've said it on many videos. I've said it on many programs. Dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. It just seems to be missing everyone. I guess war is what suits their rhetoric and what sells their story. People have gone as far as calling Maroons a hogwash story. I empathize with you. But it doesn't deter our resolve, knowing our birthright and knowing our heritage, knowing our legacy and wanting to protect that legacy. We continue and remain resolved to work with the government to bring a resolution to these challenges, but not in a divided way. It makes no sense having what we would term or what is being termed an icebreaker meeting that does not involve the voice of the representative of the territory that seems to be causing all the chaos. We need to now tackle the challenges head on and like big people. We need to be honorable and stand up and represent what we were elected to do. And I'm talking both Maroon leaders, the leader of the wider state and leaders globally. We represent the voices of our people. Chief Richard Curry is not on a sole mission. Chief Curry is here to air the concerns and the plights of the cockpit country Maroons, which have been often overlooked for quite some time now. I invite everyone Please, please, I will make myself personally available to you. Come to my community. Come and look and see what's happening here. Take a bus, charter a bus. Come here and see what's happening. Many talk and they've never been here. They don't know what's happening. There's been so much funding that has come into this country on behalf of indigenous people. And none of it gets spent here. So I again implore the minds and hearts of those that be to let good sense prevail. Please, we're asking for proper dialogue. And I and the government of cockpit country, along with our legal team, will continue to prepare documents in lieu of having dialogue that is constructive to put forth our position for economic upliftment and social mobility amongst our people that can be a mutually beneficial thing to the greater nation. Out of many, one people. Kinder, one family. Love. Thank you.